yeah welcome you again for this nptel course on earthquake geotechnical engineering and today we are continuing with our module 1 and chapter number 4 of the module today we are going to start a new chapter of this module that is on wave propagation and this chapter will be also in two lectures lecture 9 and lecture 10 so let's uh, see what is this wave propagation what we are going to talk in this uh, or uh, like you know that module 1. So, if we uh, recall in module 1, already 4 sections have been covered your technical issues during earthquakes, engineering seismology, strong ground motion, seismic hazard analysis. So, that is 4 chapter is already over and today we are going to talk about last chapter of this module that is on wave propagation. So, what we are going to cover in this uh, topics to be covered today, introduction to wave propagation then we are going to talk one dimensional wave propagation in an elastic road and three dimensional wave propagation in elastic infinite medium and finally wave propagation in a semi infinite elastic half space. So, let us start from the introduction to wave propagation it is similar to like you can consider what is wave propagation. Suppose you have a pond of water hmm, and if you put some small stone or pebbles inside the water then what will happen the waves will generate and they will move. So, you can in that case you can see the waves and they are traveling uh, like uh, away from the source of disturbance. Similarly, earthquake wave is similar to that only however, you cannot see the water waves, waves which is generated due to water you can see you can. But for earthquake waves which is elastic waves you can feel their effect but you cannot see the, those waves. So, in general waves are generated in a continuous medium due to a disturbance in the medium. So, some disturbance is required to generate these waves and disturbance here in our case in seismology will be related to earthquake, earthquake will be the cause of a disturbance. Now, when the waves are generated due to the some earthquake and then they will propagate then wave velocity through the medium which they propagate that will depends on the property of the medium. So, that is important and I think we discussed this issue earlier also. The part closest to the source of disturbance is naturally going to be affected first and then deformation which produces due to this disturbance are subsequently spread throughout the body in the form of stress waves. So, these are the stress waves or elastic waves which are generated. Now, coming to 1D wave propagation in elastic road uh, for the simplicity in real medium in the real earth you have three dimensional case. So, we will discuss later. But for time being let us say consider you have an elastic road which is in one dimensional that means it is long like uh, I could show you the that here this is you could see this elastic ro uh, road is there which is going to uh, length is going to very big ok. In this case you could have three types of motions one is longitudinal vibrations that is along the axis longitudinal axis of the road. And this could be either extension or compression. So, you could uh, stress, tension or compression could be there. But uh, let us say if this is a road or the, uh, let, let me assume my this is elastic road. So, this will be a longitudinal, but there could be torsion. In case of torsion what you have this will rotate about its axis. So, it could be a torsional vibrations or suppose if you move around the in the lateral directions like here then it will be bending or flexural vibration. But we consider at a time only one of the component rather than three all are together. So, now continue with this elastic road let us consider the first one that is longitudinal vibrations and do the analysis here. So, this is the here you have uh, a road which is length is going in front, but what we are considering a small element which is shown here as a uh, in this case which is dx is the uh, length of this element and area of this element is A which is same as the cross sectional area of the road. Now, what happens like uh, you have the stress on this element one side sigma x and on another side of this element stress is little bit higher which is sigma x plus del sigma x del x into dx. So, this element is subjected to this stress condition and in this stress condition we need to uh, we need to find out the equilibrium of this element with the different forces and that equilibrium will give you the wave velocity in this road. In fact, we write the force equilibrium that is nothing but equation of motion. So, forces are will be simply 
what will be the force? Force will be sigma x into area, cross sectional area on one side on another side also. If this force would be like you know because th this force is uh, like one side it is more one side another side is less. So, that is imbalance. So, what will happen as a result? Your road will start moving in one direction, but it does not happen. Why? Because inertial forces of the road will resist this and as a result you get these equilibrium equations. So, the first one is due to the equation number 1 which we already discussed a uh, summation of forces in x direction is simply del sigma x del x dx into a that is simply giving you the force equilibrium due to stress. But as I mentioned the inertia will try to resist the inertial force can be volume multiplied by the acceleration. So, dx into a is uh, the volume of the road and this gamma by g which is gamma by g is nothing but rho which is mass density. Mass density multiplied by del u, del u by del t square is your uh, acceleration. So, dx into a uh, simply and if I multiply by rho it will give you the mass. So, mass multiplied by acceleration give you the force. So, now what we do? We equate because left hand side is same equation number 1 and 2 and find out. So, once you equate then you end up in the equation number 3. So, in, in the equation number 3 is give you uh, the equilibrium what is u in this equation? u is nothing but displacement in x direction. Okay. Sigma x which is the stress can be represented simply Young's modulus into strain that is so e into del u by del x. So, we replace sigma x and finally, you end up in this equation which is equation number or uh, like you know this equation. We analyze this equation further and we write in another form this equation where del u by del t square is e by rho and e, this is ultimately you end up v r square equal to e by rho. What is v r? v r is nothing but it is called longitudinal wave propagation velocity in the road which is written here and e is Young's modulus and rho is mass density. So, as expected the velocity which is will be traveling in this road will depend on its material property and what are the two material properties? One is Young's modulus and another is mass density. So, Young's modulus and mass density will govern and you can find out the, uh, uh, the you know the longitudinal wave velocity. Continue with this. So, this was the like you know story all about uh, one dimensional wave propagation, but our earth is not 1D case, our uh, mother earth is a 3 dimensional and when we talk about 3 dimensional it is kind of a you know basically spare. So, if I see in the elevation or in the plan then it will look like a circle right. So, all together uh, you have and all 3 directions are there if I say in the coordinates. So, you have 2 horizontal on 1 vertical or I have 2 radial directions and then uh, suppose this is plan. So, then uh, I have this this is my plan then in this plan you have a circle and on the this is radius r this side and this side and then on the vertically or like uh, perpendicular to this board you have the third dimension. So, this is a 3D case now the way when the earthquake wave or elastic wave or stress waves uh, propagate through this uh, medium how they respond. So, they are we, we are going to discuss that what is done here it is assumed that the infinite medium through which we waves are propagated is homogeneous and isotropic. So, our first assumption though again your medium may not be in really homogeneous and isotropic. But for simplicity we are assuming that the medium is homogeneous and isotropic. In this case considering a small element of dimension dx, dy and dz and those are in x, y and z directions respectively and the displacements u, v, w, u is in x direction, v in y direction and w is in z direction. We continue and in 3D case how it looks. So, this is a 3D medium. So, it is a kind of a cuboid where you have a like let us say dx, dy, dz d, uh, are the dimension small dimension along the x direction, y direction and z direction. Now, stress conditions stresses in this case will act all along you know uh, x direction, y direction, z direction. If we consider if one phase let us say a phase which is uh, like this phase we are considering uh, in front a uh, perpendicular to this is in x direction positive x direction positive x direction is this direction negative is an opposite side. Similarly, y is positive this direction z is positive upward. So, on each phase one normal stress and two shear stresses act. For example, on phase 
on which you have x axis is perpendicular sigma x will be the normal stress tau x y and tau y z will be the that uh, like you, tau, tau x y and tau x z will be the uh, per, uh, shear stresses. In this case notations are that particular for the shear stress notations for example, uh, let me talk about tau x y. What is meaning of tau x y? First of all tau x y will be shear stress not a normal stress. Tau x y meaning is here a shear stress which is acting in x direction. So, first subscript give you the direction and y, y is it is acting on a phase normal to which is in y direction. So, tau x y is acting here this stress will be tau x y and this is acting in x direction and on a phase normal to which is in y direction. Similarly, you have tau x z which is acting again in x direction and if on a phase normal to which is in z direction. So, let us consider in x direction 3 stresses one is sigma x here as for sigma x is concerned being normal stress it, it act in x direction and it act on a plane perpendicular to which is sigma x. In fact, uh, you can say that in the short sigma x x is same as sigma x here. Similarly, we are assuming sigma y y equal to sigma y and sigma z z equal to sigma z. So, that is there. So, for the normal stress we use only one subscript rather than two subscript that may be you already aware about that. So, now let us say we consider the equilibrium of forces in x direction first then y z direction z direction. So, in the x direction three stresses are acting and if you want to get the force then what you need to do? You need to multiply by that stress with the area phase area. For example, sigma x if I multiply by the area of this phase which is will be simply what you have here this is a dy and dz. So, dy into dz will give you multiplication similarly for other cases. So, that is work out here let me here yeah. So, what you have and then what you need to understand that one of the like sigma x plus delta six sim similar in the road on another direction sigma x will be there. So, on this phase this stress is left and this stress need to be multiplied to get the force you need to multiply by dy into dz. What is dy dz? dy dz will be uh, the area of the face here this face front face. Similarly, this stress which is acting on this face and ultimately this component left out. This component need to be multiplied by the area which is dx into dz. Similarly, this component is left out and because this will be a negative direction. So, you will have this phase dx into dy. So, as a result you get dx dy dz in all the three components which are acting along x axis and then uh, the remaining the uh, left out. So, you, you, you get uh, this equation for the total force equation number 1 the where dx dy dz will be common in all the three cases which is nothing but basically volume of this uh, cuboid. So, here before considering the variation in opposite phases of this element as uh, so negatives uh, will be cancelled out sigma x minus sigma x will cancel the stresses on each phase of this element are represented by sets of orthogonal vectors. Transitional equilibrium of this element can be expressed by writing the, the sum of forces acting parallel to each axis. So, that is done here we already explained it in equation number 1. Now, equation 1 give you the force due to the stresses which is generated. But again if due to this force this element should start moving, but it will not move because the inertial force will try to resist it and inertial force is again rho into dx dy z this is nothing but your m mass and what is this quantity? This quantity is nothing but acceleration which could be a. So, mass multiplied by acceleration gives you the force. Now, what we do like earlier we equate equation number 1 and 2 because both are equal to f x and as a result in both the cases dx dy dz is coming. So, dx dy dz will be cancelled out and you end up in equation number 3 a. So, 3 a equation is coming from equation number 1 and 2. This was the process which we followed in x direction. Similarly, we can follow uh, this is the end product we follow do the same, same exercise in y direction z direction you get 3 b and 3 c. So, these equations are equations of force equilibrium and this is called in dynamics equations of motion ok. So, this is equation of motion is nothing but you can say that equation of motion is nothing but force equilibrium 
equilibrium. In fact, I will like to extend definition. If you are considering the moment, then it could be moment equilibrium. Forces and moments we say together uh, as the same thing. So, here we are considering the force equilibrium. What is u v w in the left hand side of these equations? Displacement in x, y and z direction. So, that is our unknown. Now, solving these three equations a, b, c, you need to find out the value of u, v, w. Three unknowns are there, three equations are there, you are fine. But the issue is that on the right hand side, you have sigma x to x y, they need to be also represented in terms of u, v, w, then only you can solve these equations and the, for that we need to use some other relationship. So, so, what we do? We need to express the stresses in terms of displacement. So, for that you require stress strain and strain displacement relationship. So, stress should be represented in terms of strain and strain should be represented in displacements. If you do this, then as a result on the right hand side also you get u v w in all three equations and we can solve. So, uh, stress strain relationship for 3D case is given here, uh, six relations are there. First three relations sigma x, sigma y, sigma z gives you the normal stresses and last three equations are for shear strain stresses. So, for shear stresses equation uh, relationship is rather simple that you, uh, you are just tau x y is multiplied by mu into x y and while here both lambda and mu are involved. What is lambda and mu here in these equations? Lambda and mu are nothing but called Lamesse constant. It is like you know lambda and mu are the Lamesse constants which is used in the both six equations. And these Lamesse constant can be found out using Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. L lambda can be represented by nu e 1 plus nu 1 minus twice nu. Similarly, mu is represented by e divided by twice 1 plus nu. So, here you have nu. Nu will be using for Poisson's ratio because we will in the, uh, this throughout this course we will be using nu for Poisson's ratio. Nu is what is this? Yeah, it is written here nu is Poisson's ratio. So, uh, rather than using mu, sometimes some text we use the mu, but because mu we are using mu notations here we are using for the Lamesse constant and mu is nothing but in fact it is simple say, same as a shear modulus g. So, that you need to understand. Then we define before we solve these equations, equation 3a, 3b, 3c, we need to also define volumetric strain and volumetric strain is nothing but which is given by epsilon v, epsilon x, epsilon y plus epsilon z, 3 uh, 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 strains are there, where epsilon x is nothing but what is epsilon x? Epsilon x is del u by del x. Similarly, epsilon y is del v by del y, epsilon z is del w over del z. So, which is already defined. So, the combination of all three give you volumetric strain, this is volumetric strain. So, this was relation between stress and strain. Now, strain need to be also represented in terms of displacement which is like okay, yeah, it is already here. So, linear uh, th this is which I write, write in the last slide del u by del x and shear strain for the shear strain x y you will have x y. So, down you will have x y here y z y z here z x like this. So, it go in the cycle x y y z z x like this. So, it is easy to remember once you remember one you can remember another. So, what you have here? because it is shear strain there will be cross. So, del v by del x and y you will get u. Similarly, del w by uh, del y and del v by del z same thing is for 6. So, what we do now equation we need our objective is to solve these 3 a 3 b 3 c. So, what we do in this equation we use equation 4 for a to f and then fifth and then 6 using 4 5 6 in these equations equation 3 can be written as like this. So, a, b, c, th this is 3 a, 3 b, 3 c. So, what we have done? We have represented right, left hand side is same as before, LHS is same. On the right hand side, you have converted stresses in terms of strain and strain in terms of displacement. So, basically, you have u, v, w and this is volumetric strain also and lambda and mu are known to you. So, and rho is also known, known to you. So, you have now three equations 7 a, 7 b, 7 c and all three equations have only three unknowns which is u v w. We solve and find out the u v w. Then once you are done then you are. So, for the solution to proceed the solution a Laplacian operator 
del omega square is used which is real, uh, given in equation number 8 which is the second derivative of del, uh, del square del x square plus del uh, square del y square del square del z square. The equation 7 are the equation of motion of an infinite homogeneous isotropic and elastic medium. Okay. So, this is the condition this is medium consider is homogeneous isotropic and elastic. So, equation on the basis of assumptions this have come. Now, to solve this equation we need to do some manipulation. What manipulation is done? You, you multi, uh, di, uh, differentiate each of 7a, 7b, 7c by del first equation by del x, second by del y, del y and the third one del y, del z and then add which is uh, given here. So, to, for two solutions for the first solution which will be describe propagation of an rotational wave and the second will describe a pure rotation. So, to obtain the first solution differentiate equations 7a, 7b and 7c with respect to x, y and z respectively and add the together. So, once you add after differentiating, so you, what you will get you will end up in equation number 9. In this equation 9 epsilon v is already defined, epsilon v is nothing but your volumetric strain and v c you will end up lambda plus 2 mu over rho v c square. If I put lambda and mu value in terms of e and rho then you get e by this equation and this can be also written k where what is k? k is the bulk modulus. So, basically what you get v c in this case v c is simply you can say square root of k by rho. So, inst instead of like in the case of elastic road you got v r hmm? and v r was nothing but e by rho. So, instead of e which was Young's modulus it is replaced by k which is bulk modulus and you know the bulk modulus value is higher than the uh, like uh, Young's modulus value for a new, new value if nu is not 0. So, if nu is 0 then in that case your k will be same as e because if I put in this equation. So, k will be same as e there will be no difference if Poisson's ratio is 0 then in fact there will be no difference between e and uh, k and uh, e but then we lose the meaning of the Poisson's ratio. In fact, all the constant become same k, e and g for the when the Poisson's ratio are same. So, what you have in this case if nu equal to 0 then your v c what is v c here? v c is the velocity of compression waves in the not in the road in 3 d case. So, c subscript is stand for the compression wave it is velocity of compression wave and this is given by this relation. If nu equal to 0 then you get this one, but if you nu is not 0 in that case v c will be always greater than v r. Okay. So, for the real material where nu is not 0 we can expect that the wave velocity in 3 d medium will be higher than the, uh, the compression wave velocity in the elastic road or one dimensional case. So, that is the outcome here. Continue with this for another solution as we discussed that these equation uh, this 7 a 7 b 7 c have three two solutions one solution we already find out. For the second solution you need to differentiate opposite like for example, x uh, need to be differentiated with, with y and uh, the second y should be z and then subscript rather than adding. So, here for another solution for another solution equation can be obtained by differentiating 7b with z and equation 7c with y then eliminate by substituting. So, what you do with this operation? So, you uh, differentiate equation 7b by z and 7c with y and subtract uh, with uh, from one another then you end up in equation number 11. Now, in equation number 11 this quantity del w del y del z this is same on both sides and this in the compact form can be written as a, this form. So, what is omega x bar this quantity we are writing which is rotation basically omega x and the bar which is nothing but rotational component uh, this is denoting rotation component in x direction and we write equation number 12 a is coming from 11 which is again written in the compact form V s square. What is V s square? V s square in this case is nothing but your mu by rho which is given in the next slide. So, here similar expressions first of all are obtained for y and z direction and V s square is represented by this. So, which represent your this and on the if you go on the right hand side 
then you get Vs square G by rho. So, this could be also it says Vs equal to G by rho and this is very very important relationship in geotechnical earthquake engineering. Shear velocity gives you shear velocity can be find out if you know the shear modulus and mass density. So, this is the relation for the shear velocity we obtained. So, this was there yeah, continue with this. Now, suppose we find the ratio of two wave velocity one is compression wave velocity and it is typically called P wave velocity and another is called shear wave velocity. The ratio of two wave velocity depends only one factor which is Poisson's ratio and Poisson's ratio is 2 1 my uh, here given here and we will plot uh, like uh, how this varies on, on this case uh, this relationship. So, we will continue use this relationship in the next lecture also. So, you remember this relation that is 2 1 minus nu divided by 1 minus twice nu. So, this relationship will be used further. Uh, so, two kinds of wave was there. Now, continue with this. So, what is our conclusion for the three dimensional case? For 3D wave propagation in elastic infinite medium, there are two types of wave. One is called compression wave and the velocity travel velocity of this is Vc. It is also called primary wave, P wave or irrotational wave. So, there are four names for the same wave. In general compression wave, primary wave, P wave and irrotational wave and the wave velocity will be Vc in 3D case or the same will become Vr for 1D case, Vr for 1D, one dimensional case. So, then shear another velocity shear wave velocity that is also called secondary wave, S wave, distortion wave and voluminal wave. So, these two waves which represent different types of body motions travel at different velocities and these are basically both of these I think you would have in the second lecture, second uh, ch uh, chapter we have discussed they are nothing but in short both called body waves. So, this was body waves, this is no uh, out of the uh, both are body wave nothing surface wave. So, when the waves are traveling inside the earth they are not coming on the surface, they are not touching your earth uh, ground until they are not coming on the ground then they will be as a body wave only they will not there will not be any surface wave. Now, continue with this uh, in the road we already discussed E by rho. So, this is a, a summary only. So, all the things we on the slide is already discussed. So, V r will be E by rho and V c will be lambda plus tw twice mu by rho and shear velocity another wave is given by G by rho. So, this is in general and when nu equal to 0 this becomes same as E by rho. Okay. So, now you may have that what is the typically wave velocity for different mediums. So, it will depends on the property of your medium whether it is hard, whether it is rock, whether it is soil depending on the property of the medium you can find the what we call the compression wave velocity or shear wave velocity. So, for example, uh, for different material uh, here mass density is listed which is in kg per meter cube and you have uh, this is compression wave velocity Vc and the shear wave velocity in both are in meter per second. Naturally, Vc is going to be higher than Vs and minimum value if, if I put even rho equal to 0 in this last uh, in this case even for nu equal to 0 what do you get from this equation for nu equal to 0 you get Vc over Vs equal to root 2. So, minimum this ratio is root 2 for nu equal to if I say 0 0.5 what will happen? This will go to infinity, this ratio is will be tending to infinity. So, that means the minimum this ratio should be root 2 and it will exponentially increase as the Poisson's ratio increases. So, the difference in this column V c and V s is large when the Poisson's ratio is large and this difference will be uh, uh, minimum when the Poisson's ratio is 0, but uh, for the rock or for soil Poisson's ratio is not going to be 0. So, as a result this ratio will you will never get root 2 it will be uh, always you see more than 2 times or 3 times or 4 times even 10 times in the first case or like this. So, these are uh, shear uh, compression wave which is ranging from minimum 300 meter per second to 1500 while here minimum 110 to going to 260 meter per second. So, this was all a story about 3D case, but what happens uh, like if you have the water then there is some issue the measurement of the velocity of compression in water saturated soil will not be a representative velocity. Why? Because the water has uh, uh, water has here and uh, water do not have shear strength and zero value in shear modulus. 
So what is the shear modulus is 0 and it does not have any shear strength. Uh, water has it should be water has 0 shear strength. So 0 is missing here. Water has 0 shear strength and has 0 value in shear modulus. So once we are done with the uh, with the 3D case, now the issue comes here. In the real scenario, you do not have 3D. Uh, in the actually, what happens? You have the on the ground what we call elastic half space. And how elastic half space looks? Elastic half space is like this. So, this is medium, and in this medium, that is medium is called elastic half space. And this is in fact what we call this is going to infinity. So, we call it semi -infin infinite medium, semi infinite medium. So, our earth is semi infinite medium, it is not infinity, it means because you have one free surface here. So, it is ground level or surface level. So, when the waves travel from the focus when they are traveling inside the earth they can go inside and like you know traveling but when they come towards the earth then they will hit free surface and what happens when the waves travels on elastic half space this is called a half space this 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 medium is nothing but half space this is half space so when the waves travel through the half space what will happen in elastic infinite medium there are two types of waves but when you consider the semi infinite medium a third wave is also generated which is basically relief wave or surface wave which we are going to discuss how it is generated. So, uh, so how, how half space is in x y plane in with z assume positive in the downward direction and for this case what happens because you have uh, let us say in one direction if I say uh, this is my x okay, and this is z, z direction. So, I no need to consider uh, y. So, as a result displacement in y direction v equal to 0 when we consider semi infinite medium and the strain uh, this is a plane strain case. So, as a result del u by del y equal to del w or del y also 0. So, this is plane strain case. So, this is these conditions. So, we are working with these condition v should be 0 as well as strain should be 0. So, plane strain case strain in y uh, like you know y directions. So, now coming to this, so as a result instead of 3 equations when you consider semi infinite half space then you will end up in 2 equations only one in x direction another in z direction. So, these are the 2 equations which is equation of motion. It is quite similar to what we discussed earlier as equation 3a, 3b, 3c. Now, to solve these equations in terms of u and v, we use some potential functions which is phi and psi is give, uh, given here. So, like phi is a function of x and z and psi is also x and z. Beside that for the dynamic case they will also vary with time where what is omega in this case? Omega in this case this omega is not w this is of angular frequency. So, this represent your frequency of excitation and if we solve for the solution you need to have uh, these equations are satisfied if we del square plus h square del square is same as a Laplacian operator as earlier and h square and k and phi equal to what is h and k? h and k are nothing but they are called wave numbers hmm, in which wave numbers h is simply uh, this is not w actually this is wrongly written this is omega and this is also omega. So, this is omega v c and this is omega v s. Okay. So, omega divided by v c and omega divided by v s both are called wave numbers. Now, omega here it is correctly written here omega is replaced by 2 pi t here. So, if I replace by this then I get because V c is greater than V s as a result your k will be greater than h okay? and using these equations what we can have omega, omega can be written from the top equations into k into V s V c V k into V s or it can be written as h into V c. So, if I use k into V s now omega is also V r into lambda what is V r relative wave velocity and lambda is some number it is not wavelength here lambda is not a wavelength and it is not Lamis constant it is something else. So, what is here this is a constant only uh, which is unit is uh, over 1 meter 1 divided by meter same as a uh, like uh, opposite of wave number. 
So, here what you see if I work on this equation then V r k by lambda and ultimately you get C 1 into V s. So, that C 1 is a constant C 1 is a ratio which is less than 1. So, what has been observed that V r is a function of we can represent real relative wave in terms of shear velocity and normally it has been seen that depending on the Poisson's ratio if your Poisson's ratio is 0 0.5 which is maximum value then V r end up 0 0.99533 V s that means around 0 0.96 V s shear velocity. If you consider 0 0.25 then this decrease to 0 0.9194. So, in general the relief wave velocity is almost similar to shear velocity, but always less than V s. So, V r will be always less than V s not equal or greater than V s. Okay. So, this is the for the case here. So, these wave have different velocities of propagation and knowing their velocity it is easy to predict in which order the wave will travel. So, this was about in the elastic half space. So, this uh, with this I end up this lecture here which was little longer and I think we will continue in the second lecture on wave propagation. Thank you very much for your kind attention.